Hey everyone, it's Heidi. I am coming to you live from our household. And I wanted to share a devotional with you today since we couldn't be together. I know some of you attend Bible study in different groups throughout the week. So I'm inviting you to join me as we walk through the book of Ruth over the next couple of weeks. I'm going to do a special Bible study with you and it's focused around the topic of quit quitting everything. If you're anything like me, uh, there's so many things I want to try in life and I don't always make it to the end. I end up quitting somewhere in the middle of it and it's not the best habit to have. And I thought I'd take some inspiration in this time to see what scripture has to say about it. And we're going to do it through the book of Ruth. Now, in full transparency, I have been doing this Bible study on Friday night with a few women, and it has been transforming for us. So I am excited to share it with you guys as well. So let's begin and let's start with prayer. Let's pray. Gracious God, we thank you that you're with us no matter where we are. Even though we're apart, your spirit is what connects us. And so we pray today as we approach your word that you would sow it deeply into our spirits and souls, that we would help us to apply it in the areas that you are speaking to us and that we might continue to live fruitful lives that love our neighbors well and directly reflect your heart. Join us in this time, we pray. Amen. All right, so we are going to start with the book of Ruth, and I'm going to read today uh, in the verses 1 through 18 of chapter 1. So here we go. In the days when the judges ruled, there was a famine in the land. So a man from Bethlehem and Judah, together with his wife and two sons, went to live for a while in the country of Moab. The man's name was Elimelech, his wife's name was Naomi, and the names of his two sons were Malon and Kilion. They were Ephratites from Bethlehem, Judah, and they went to Moab to live there. Now Elimelech, Naomi's husband, died, and she was left with her two sons. They married Moabite women, one named Orpah, and the other Ruth. And after they have lived there about 10 years, both Malan and Kilian also died. And Naomi was left without her two sons and her husband. When Naomi heard in Moab that the Lord had come to the aid of his people by providing food for them, she and her daughter-in-laws prepared to return home from there. With her two daughters-in-law, she left the place where she had been living and set out on the road that would take them back to the land of Judah. Then Naomi said to her two daughters-in-law, Go back, each of you, to your mother's home. May the Lord show you kindness as you have shown kindness to your dead husbands and to me. May the Lord grant that each of you will find rest in the home of another husband. Then she kissed them goodbye, and they wept out loud. And they said to her, we will go back with you to your people. But Naomi said, return home, my daughters. Why would you come with me? Am I going to have any more sons who come and become your husbands? Return home, my daughters. I am too old to have another husband. And even if I thought there was still hope for me, even if I had a husband tonight and then gave birth to sons, would you wait until they grew up? Would you remain unmarried for them? No, my daughters, it is more bitter for me than for you, because the Lord's hand has turned against me. As they wept aloud again, then Orpah kissed her mother-in-law goodbye, but Ruth clung to her. Look, Naomi said, your sister-in-law is going back to her people and her gods. Go back with her. But Ruth replied, don't urge me to leave you or to turn back from you. Where you go, I will go. And where you stay, I will stay. Your people will be my people and your God, my God. Where you die, I will die. And there I will be buried. May the Lord deal with me, be it ever so severely, if even death separates you and me. When Naomi realized that Ruth was determined to go with her, 
she stopped urging her. So my first question to you is, are you a person that tends to quit things when they get a little hard? If I'm going to be honest, the first time I quit something, I was eight years old and I still remember that moment. I absolutely flat out quit playing piano. I had been taking piano lessons since I was about six. I was two years in and I was so tired of running drills. You, you had to learn scales and chords and it's the foundation of piano playing, but I was done. It wasn't fun anymore. I was bored. And I remember telling my mother, I walked defiantly into the kitchen and confidently said, I quit. And my mom replied back to me, okay, with that tone of, we'll see about that. <laughs> and I will tell you, I'm so glad that my mom continued to bear with me and encourage me and at times push me uh, over the humps that I had that made me want to quit. But it's not that far into life that we learn that habit, that when things get hard or tough, to run away. And so I really want to talk about that with us today and see if it doesn't spark something for you too. Let's, let's talk about something. What is the reasons that we actually quit things in life? You know, I, I, I think if we're honest, we tend to get overwhelmed with life and we have anxiety about things that we try, especially when they're big audacious goals. Maybe we even get afraid. We suddenly get our in over our heads and we feel like this is too impossible for me to accomplish. And so we get afraid and we freeze up or we run away. Maybe some of the reasons that we quit are we just run out of time and resources. We, we set too many goals up and we just don't have the time and the resources to finish them. For whatever the reason is that you are impacted in the middle of trying maybe a new discipline or trying, um, to learn a new skill, whatever it is that impacts you. I want, I want you to make a note of that right now. Because what happens to us is there is a battle inside of each and every one of us. There is a battle in which we are trying to grow. We're trying to learn new things. The Holy Spirit is calling us forward. And there is that other part of us that's just scared and it's afraid and we feel small and we feel like I can't do this. You know, maybe in this time right now that we are experiencing, you are having to do things differently. You know, you're having to figure out how do I watch Pastor Heidi online through Facebook? You know, how do I navigate checking in on my family that lives far away? How do I navigate getting my groceries and my medications um, when I can't go outside my house? You know, there is fear and there is anxiety, and now we have to learn new skills and new ways of doing things. And there's a part of us that just wants to go and crawl in the covers, right? You just want to go crawl into bed, pull those covers over, and say, wake me up when this is all over. But I really want to encourage you today that you are not alone in this battle. You are not alone. You know, all of us are experiencing this, and the scripture has something to say about it. Our quit quitting verse. I have a quit quitting verse, each devotion for you. And today our quit quitting verse is Romans 5, 3 and 4. And I actually preached on this this weekend. So we're going to pull a little bit from our sermon. But our quit quitting verse today is Romans 5, 3 and 4. And not only that. But we also rejoice in our afflictions because we know that affliction produces endurance. Endurance pr produces proven character and proven character produces hope. All right. So I have a question for you. So the scripture tells us that, hey, affliction and suffering doesn't have to be always about the pain of it, that there's something else that God's doing in the midst of it. 
And so my question for you is, is there a place in your life where you have been experiencing affliction lately, where you've been experiencing suffering? Maybe it's your medical condition. Maybe it's with money and provision. Maybe it's in relationships with people and family. You know, it says that we, in, in the affliction, God is trying to develop us and grow us in the midst of it. Not that he causes the suffering to happen, but he uses it to develop us and help us to grow. Now, everything in us wants to avoid pain, right? None of us want to experience the hardship in the middle of it. And so our tendency and reaction inside of us is to run. We want to get away from that pain as quickly as possible. But we here learn about this young woman, Ruth, right? So Naomi is in Bethlehem, all right? She's married to a husband, and Bethlehem experiences a famine. It experiences a shortage of food. We can kind of relate to that over the last week, right? You go to the grocery store, and some of the shelves are pretty bare. Naomi decides that she's going to relocate with her husband to Moab. All right. So they, they go on foot and it's not, it's not a near place. I would say it's probably the distance of going from Philadelphia to Ohio. All right. So this is not a short trek. They travel to Moab and while they're there, they have sons and those sons take on wives, right? They marry Moabite women. One is named Orpah, one's named Ruth. And everything's going great until Naomi's husband, Elimelech, dies. Okay, so the patriarch of the family dies. So they keep going, but the two sons then also die. So here's these three women left in the depths of their grief. You know, Naomi, no, sorry, Naomi has no husband, and Ruth and Orpah are left without husbands too. And Naomi, in her grief, makes a decision that she is going to return to Bethlehem. And she tells the two daughter-in-laws, Go home, go back to your own people. Even if I got married again today, even if I had sons today, you know, you will be old women before they would grow up. Orpah and Ruth have obviously attached themselves. They've grown to love Naomi. It's evident in their response to her of, no, we won't leave you. But she encourages them to go home. Orpah decides to go, Ruth decides to stay. And faced with the fact that she has no husband, which means in that day she has no standing. She has no ability to um, speak for herself or demand anything or have any home or own any land. Despite all that, she makes a decision to leave everything that she knows and go with Naomi. Hang on one second. <laughs> Margie just texted me an important question. Give me one second. Okay. So Ruth makes this incredible decision to leave everything she knows and go with Naomi. Right? So Ruth leaves her land. She leaves her customs. She becomes a foreigner. Think about that. She leaves her family. She leaves her God. She leaves all of her customs and she chooses to set out on an unknown future on the track home. I want you to think about that. I want you to think about if you were to leave your house, leave your plot of land, leave the people you knew, the friends you know, the family you had, travel to a completely different country, where you don't have any place to stay. You don't know anybody there. Would you do that? Would you do that? But Ruth makes that decision to go. It's a big, big, big decision in her life. And she just decides, I'm going to follow Naomi. So the two women return home to Bethlehem. And as they do this, we are going to watch them handle it differently. In our next devotion, we're going to take a look at how Naomi handles it and how Ruth responds to it. Because there is something that happens in each and every one of us. And we see it played out in these two characters of the story. 
It's something called the cycle of defeat. All right. Our cycle of defeat is raging inside of us every time we have to make these big decisions. See, we suddenly feel like we're facing failure in our big goal and whatever task we've set out to do. We suddenly feel that failure in front of us. We start to feel hopeless about it and we quit, right? That's how it works. We start and I'll be, I'll give you an example. So I am a notorious person who starts exercising all the time. I make these big goals of all the weight that I'm going to want to lose. And I start my big goal. I miss one day of working out and I say, Oh, I'll get it the next day. And I miss the next day. And suddenly I've realized that I am going to fail at this. This is not going to work. And as I start to feel the failure coming on, then I start to feel like, well, this is pointless. This is hopeless. Why should I even try? I might as well eat whatever I like and just stay in bed instead. And then I eventually quit, right? That cycle of defeat happens inside all of us. And we're going to watch as Naomi and Ruth press on and handle it differently. You're going to see Naomi in that cycle of defeat repeatedly giving voice to it. And you're going to see Ruth actually choose a different path. She's going to choose a way that reflects the fruits of the spirit, the love, the peace, patience, kindness, gentleness, self-control, all of those she is going to choose with it. She's going to choose to starve those thoughts of I want to quit. It's too hard. I can't do this. Naomi's going to buy into that and Ruth is going to starve those thoughts. She is going to choose to make the next decision she does a good one. And she is going to focus on those fruits. And by doing that, not only does she end up saving herself in that situation, she also ends up being able to save Naomi and redeem both women and their entire story through this. So I encourage you today, as you are looking ahead at your big decisions, at you as you're looking at this time that you have where you are in your house, what are some goals that you want to do that you want to uh, see through to the end without quitting? And I encourage you to pick a goal today that you want to do, whether it's cleaning out a closet, whether it's Um, going through your clothing and picking out some stuff you're going to donate when we can be back together in society, or whether you're going to start trying to learn to cook, whatever it is you want to do. I want you to pick something productive to do during this time. Maybe you want to pick one where you say, I'm going to call each of the people on my phone list over the next two weeks to check in on them. I'm going to call each of the people and love on them and encourage them. Whatever you choose to do, I want you to pick something today and we're going to see it through. We're going to make sure we accomplish that goal over the next few weeks together as we do this devotion, as we become people who quit quitting and focus on the fruits. Thanks for joining me today. I can't wait to see you guys again soon.